So, uh, there was a, uh, a journalist of some kind, independent reporter, okay, uh, who made a thread about a protest, um, and I want to read this, uh, the protest was at, I believe, Alito's house, Supreme Court Justice, and, um, I want to showcase, uh, some of what's going on here, this is, uh, from yesterday, so here we have, uh, Talia Jane on Twitter posted a thread, uh, now, there was a protest organized outside of Brett Kavanaugh's house a couple of days ago, organized by the literal neighbors, next door neighbors to Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh's next door neighbors, like literally the people on his street, across the street, right next to his house, they all organized this protest because they don't fucking like him. Nobody likes him. He's a fucking freak. Brett Kavanaugh is a fucking freak, right? But anyway, uh, groups and organizations in Washington, D.C., uh, organized now another protest outside of Samuel Alito's house. Um, and so police uh, respond in very interesting ways. And I want to showcase this. I'm just going to be scrolling through um, this while I talk. But one of the important parts to underscore here is that no one has a pitchfork. No one has a torch, right? They're not burning down Alito's house. They're not burning down Kavanaugh's house, right? No one is uh, walking around with guns, with sniper rifles, with bombs, with AR-15s, right? Like you see in right-wing demonstrations. No one is doing that, right? People are literally just saying, hey, fuck you. And that's what's causing this outrage. Now, again, it needs to be very, very, very clear that mainstream media, as well as politicians, including Democrats and Republicans, all of them, Republicans and Democrats. They are both anti-abortion parties. It needs to be very understood. One of them is very clear about it. Oh, we need to destroy abortion at all times or at all costs for this, the babies. The Democrats just don't care. The leader of the Democratic Party is endorsing Republicans and anti-abortion Democrats. What does Democrat even mean, by the way? I don't even know. Um, the leader of the Democratic Party is uh, putting forth statements condemning violence and protests at people's homes. <laughs> now again, note, right? Protesters have the capacity to use fire and instead they're using it for candlelight vigils as well, instead of throwing Molotov cocktails at Alito's house, right? Which I'm not endorsing, by the way. But again, notice the police presence, police uh, moving all across the house, occupying their house, why? Why do these justices fear for their safety? Well, it's because, again, they are enacting fascist law in this country, fascist rule in this country. They are deciding what people can and can't do with their own bodies. Imagine if there was a law that made it illegal, that made it, you will literally go to jail if you get a mole tased off of your face. Like, you know how they have, like, those mole lasers? You know, they, they just laser the mole and then it's gone. Imagine you go to jail for that. Imagine you go to jail for going to a dentist. Now, imagine not only do you go to jail for going to a dentist, but then the dentist goes to jail for cleaning your teeth. That's what the Supreme Court is going to rule on. Do you go to jail? Because you need chemotherapy? That's what they want to rule on. You all can already go to jail if you eat the wrong plant. If you see a fucking weed growing through your fucking crack in the sidewalk outside of your house and it's the wrong one, you can go to jail. That's what this government does. It is a fascist government. So notice, by the way, that uh, this is my favorite part of the thread, where basically all of Elito's neighbors... Uh, you know, which, you know, it's a, it's a relatively wealthy neighborhood. But again, they're joining the protest. They're giving the, uh, the, you know, reporter here just free food and everything. You know, it's good optics. But again, this is what protesters are doing. This is what's happening outside Supreme Court justices' houses. It needs to be understood. There is no threat. There is no danger. Okay? That's just not, that's just not the case. The threats that are happening... And the danger that would be happening is not directed at Supreme Court justices at this moment in time. Now, we can debate, 
should, could, would, but we have to look at the facts of this matter. And so again, it needs to be understood that the media and politicians are going to do anything that they can to shift the conversation away from the fact that the Supreme Court somehow, people in bedsheets and snuggies, are going to dictate who and who cannot go to the doctor. That is, again, medical tyranny. We have modern medicine, but they only want modern medicine to be used by the wealthy, by the elite, and by people that they approve of. Right? That is, that's just how it is. That's, that's, that's where we're living. If you're an adult in Alabama, but you happen to be queer, can't go to the doctor, right? This is what they're doing. They want to dictate who and who is not allowed to use medicine, who and who is not allowed to get health care. That's their goal. Meanwhile, the other side is saying, hey, what the fuck? That's fucked up. And look at how much money they're wasting on cops. It's ridiculous. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this, and I'm going to make this a combined segment, is that the Senate just passed a security bill for Supreme Court family members. Is the Senate going to pass security bills for people to go to abortion clinics? The Supreme Court, as previously couple of decades ago, ruled that Westboro Baptist Church protesters are allowed to stalk abortion patients, right? The Supreme Court ruled that the Westboro Baptist Church following abortion patients home and then attacking them at home and then yelling at them at home, that's legal. You go to the doctor and get a medical procedure, and you can have people yelling at you at your house every day forever, and the Supreme Court says, <laughs> but all of a sudden, the people that live literally right next door and across the street from Kavanaugh and Alito say, hey, fuck you, and all of a sudden, the Senate, 100 votes. I, I really want to be very clear here. 100 votes, even Bernie Sanders, even Ed Markey, even Elizabeth Warren, even all these so-called left-wingers. 100 votes. Is the Senate going to have 100 votes to give security teams for abortion patients? Nah. Is the Senate going to give 100 votes to give security teams for doctors? Nah. No way. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck the patients. I hope they die. Fuck the doctors. I hope they die. But we really got to save the bedsheet people. The people walking around in Snuggies. We got to save them. Oh no, someone has a megaphone. Let's waste money giving them extra security. The Senate on Monday easily cleared a bill to extend security protections to the immediate family members of Supreme Court justices. The bill spearheaded by John Cornyn and Chris Coons passed the Senate by unanimous consent, meaning all 100 senators had to sign off in order for it to be passed without a formal vote. All 100. Yes, even Bernie Sanders. Now, I don't know, I haven't read a statement from Bernie Sanders, but to me, to me, that's disgusting. I mean, I really, I mean, one of the worst votes Bernie has taken in a long, long time. It still now heads to the House for passage. Threats to the physical safety of Supreme Court justices and their families are disgraceful, blah, 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 blah. I'm glad the Senate, blah, 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 fuck them, coons in a statement, blah, 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 fuck them, fuck me, fuck you. The bill would formally allow Supreme Court of the United States Police to provide around-the-clock protection to family members in line with security some executive and congressional offices get. Now, again, you get an abortion and some crazy religious fundamentalists, like, follow you and stalk you to your home and threaten you at your work, the Supreme Court says that's constitutional. They're expressing their First Amendment. Now that, I agree with that ruling. As fucked up as it is, I agree with that ruling. But also, I agree with the idea that you have a First Amendment protection as in a right to free speech. When it's an abortion patient, when it's a Supreme Court justice. But note that the government of the United States and the Supreme Court 
They're hypocrites. Protection for me, but not for thee. It's illegal to protest outside of a judge's home. And we're going to spend infinite amounts of money paying and wasting money, by the way, not on vaccines so that we can stop the pandemic, not on health care so that people can stop being sick and die, not on, I don't know, maybe fixing our infrastructure, maybe so that people don't have poison drinking water. No, 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 no. Fuck that. Fuck that. Let's waste money on giving police overtime cash to stop them from the people that are cooking and giving people key lime pies. Yeah, look how dangerous this is. Oh no. Samuel Alito's neighbor baked a key lime pie. Oh fuck, we need millions of dollars. 100 votes in the Senate. Holy shit. And, and again, even Bernie Sanders. I don't know what his excuse is, but he needs to come up with a good one. A really good one. The bill was blah, 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 Thursday, roughly three days after the leak of the draft decision, blah, blah, blah. The report sparked near immediate protests outside the Supreme Court where law enforcement officials subsequently put up a non-scalable fence. Groups gathered over the weekend to protest outside the homes of Kavanaugh and Chief Justice John Roberts, while a group is also planned to hold a vigil outside of Alito's home on Monday night. Now, note that vigil is in quotes. Why is that? I don't know. One hundred votes. Can you get 100 votes on anything else other than more cops for the most well-protected anyway? They've already got infinite money. They've already got infinite protection. They've already got private security. But let's waste more government money on giving them more cops. Again, anything that they possibly can to steer the conversation away from the fact that these policies that they want to enact are going to kill people. Restricting people's access to health care requires killing them. Right? Again, the fascist mode of thought is how can we kill people but make it legal? If you walk up to someone who got an abortion and shoot them in the head, unfortunately for you, that's illegal. So how can we make doing that as legal as possible? Oh, we make it so that they can't even go to the doctor. We make it so that if they've got a life-threatening condition, a doctor has to say, sorry, some guy in a bed sheet wearing a Snuggie, weigh 2,470 miles away, said that I'm not allowed to give you health care, so now you're going to die. And also, you know, what's inside of you, right? Your so-called baby. Oh, you're going to have a stillbirth, but you have to carry it anyway, and you're going to die. And, there, and I could stop it, but some guy in a bed sheet Two and a half fucking thousand miles away. I said I can't. So, sorry. Have fun dying. And then someone dies. But guess what? It's legal. You pulled the trigger without going to jail. That is the goal. That's what they want to do. Now, again, right-wingers are not afraid of pulling the trigger, as we see with Kyle Rittenhouse and so forth. Right-wing vigilantism has been happening in this country for decades. Right? I mean, look at the, you know multiple bombings and terrorist attacks, you know, assassinations of medical professionals and doctors, assassinations of just random patients who receive health care. Right-wingers are no, no, not afraid at all of violence in any capacity, but also random acts of vigilantism are not enough. Kyla Rittenhouse only killed two people. How the hell are we going to execute every single left winger in this country if we're only killing two people a year, right? We need an industry of mass murder and death in this country. That's what Republicans and that's what fascists and that's what Democrats think. They're all in agreement. They're all in agreement. Both parties, 100% votes. Every senator, including Bernie Sanders, including whatever left winger you want to come up with so-called, right? They all voted in favor of fascism. Cops for thee, or rather cops for me, but not for thee? How can we create a legalized industry of murdering people that we disagree with? You never see that on the left. Left-wingers do not support policy that would restrict access to health care for Republicans. Republicans do that on their own. They don't want to take a vaccine. Fuck them. Hey, your body, your choice or whatever, right? Okay. 
right? But do you see any left-wing politician say that if someone voted for Donald Trump, they shouldn't have access to vaccines? Have you seen a left-wing politician say that Republicans shouldn't be allowed to go to the grocery store? Do you, have you seen left-wing politicians say that if you voted for Ronald Reagan, you shouldn't be allowed to go through chemotherapy? No, but you see right-wingers doing the exact same. Have, have you seen a left-winger support legislation that says straight people are not allowed to go to the doctor? No. Have you seen legislation from left-wingers that say that cisgender people who go through menopause or something else or whatever who end up needing hormones, are they not allowed to get hormones? Right? Because hormones are bad, right? No, 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 no. Only right-wingers want to restrict hormone access to queer kids and adults, like in Alabama and North Carolina has a bill that wants to ban healthcare for queer people under the age of 25. Do you see left-wingers say, oh, if you're straight and cisgender, you're not allowed to have hormone therapy. Menopause is going to be real rough. Sorry, it's nature. Fuck you. It's nature, bitch. Do you see left-wingers do that? No, it's always the right. The right wants and is and always will be trying to create a mass murder industry for profit and to murder and kill and expunge their political enemies from this earth. That is their goal. We are in the Fourth Reich. We are in a civil war. It's not heating up. It's not going to start any minute. We have been in one for decades. The culture war isn't just something that happens on Twitter or Facebook. People get killed at protests, right? Again, medical professionals and doctors have been assassinated. Planned Parenthoods have been bombed. And what's the reaction from the left? Up until now, it's been nothing. There's no left-wing politician that would even dream of enacting similar kinds of legislation. You don't even see these blue states using their advantage, right? They've got blue states. They're not using... They're blue slate legislators, uh, legislatures to get bills, uh, you know, to be sued into the Supreme Court to see, you know, oh, what's illegal, what's not legal, blah, 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 this and that. You see red states doing this all across the country. Oh, let's ban gay people from teaching. Let's ban gay people from living. Let's ban gay people from going to the doctor. You don't see, like, even just as a messaging campaign, you don't see Democrats give a shit. Why? Because they agree with fascism. Democrats do not do anything to stop fascism because they like it. They like it. They like the fact that no one gives a fuck. They don't want to animate people to give a fuck because then they're going to vote them out because they know that they're corrupt. So they're fine with the fascists running and ruling this government. They're fine with killing the queers and killing anyone with a womb. They're fine with killing anyone who's not white. As long as they don't kill them. And this is where we get into like, you know, like we need to talk about this, right? Like this is a culture war, but it's one-sided. This is a civil war, but it's one-sided. Only one side of this conversation is using violence. Historically, that's always been the way it has been. Can you think of any examples of left-wing violence? against right-wingers. Now, a lot of people might want to bring up 2020, rioters and looters! <laughs> the right loves bringing up the rioters and looters. Rioters and looters, they're looting and rioting! God damn, you should have been goddamn rioting! But, can you give me any example of rioters and looters targeting right-wingers for their political opinions and actually killing them? Now, some people might come up with one example in 2020 with the example of Michael Reinl, but it's disputed whether or not he was targeting that guy or whether or not it was self-defense. And guess what? There was no legal proceedings to find out what actually happened. Why? Because Donald Trump sent a hit squad to go kill Michael Reinl. So we don't have any facts. We don't have any discovery process. We'll never know whether or not that was self-defense because the right, instead of using the court of law, instead of using legal mechanisms... The President of the United States organized an assassination on an American citizen. Why? Because he's a left-winger. So they can do that. They can just go in there, shoot and kill him, lie about it. Like, there's like a dozen witnesses that directly contradict what the police say happened. 
and their names aren't released. No one talks about this. Right, so anytime a left winger actually does anything remotely violent, Kyle Rittenhouse can kill two people, go to court, cry on TV, and get off. Why wasn't Michael Ryan given that same exact privilege? Even if he was found guilty. Because again, the rules are not the same for left and right. The right has all the power. The right has all the parties. The right has all the politicians. They've got all the money. The left has nothing. The left has nothing at all. And this should, ex this should explain exactly the situation we're dealing with. Even so-called left-wing senators like Bernie Sanders. Bernie could have single-handedly stopped this from happening via unanimous consent. He could have said, eh, we don't need cops. Down. Sorry. You have to do the vote manually. He chose not to. Now, I'd love to see a statement. I'm not sure if he has one out yet. But this is where we're at.